space is unlimited, or so we think. Our very solar system alone is subject of immense speculation and awe, with astronomers trying to discover more about our glorious cosmos. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three incredible discoveries. NASA's Fermi Telescope Finds Giant Structure in Our Galaxy A previously unseen structure in the center of the Milky Way has been uncovered by NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Telescope. The new discovery's total size is 50,000 light-years in length, with 25,000 light-years extending north of the galactic center and 25,000 light-years extending south of the galactic center. The structure is made up of two gamma-ray emitting bubbles. How they came to be and what their purpose is, is not yet clear to researchers. This bubble structure covers over half of the visible sky, stretching from the constellation Virgo to the constellation Grus. It is speculated that it could be millions of years old. The bubbles were discovered by astronomer Doug Finkbainer and his team when they processed publicly available data from Fermi's Large Area Telescope. The Large Area Telescope is the most sensitive and highest resolution gamma ray detector ever launched. Gamma rays have the smallest wavelengths and the most energy of any wave in the electromagnetic spectrum. They are created by the hottest, most energetic objects, such as neutron stars and pulsars, supernova explosions, and regions around black holes. There is some indication that this giant structure could be a particle jet from the supermassive black hole at the galactic center. However, Scientists are still conducting more analysis to be able to determine how this newly found structure was born. Because the bubbles appear to have well-defined edges, it suggests that it was formed because of a great and quite rapid energy release. The reason the bubble structure was not found by previous astronomers studying gamma rays is something called diffuse emission. Diffuse emission is a fog of gamma rays that show up all over the sky. It's caused by particles moving at speeds very close to the speed of light, interacting with light and interstellar gas in the Milky Way. The emissions coming from the bubbles are largely more energetic than the rest of the gamma ray fog elsewhere in the Milky Way. Chinese scientists launch their own space telescope to hunt for Earth 2.0. China has announced its plan to launch a space mission to find an Earth-like planet outside of the solar system. The mission has been named Earth 2.0, the actual planet will meet the criteria of a second Earth and must be orbiting in the habitable zone of a star just like the Sun. It would also need the right conditions for liquid water and possibly life to exist. Searching for and studying exoplanets is not a new idea. More than 5,000 exoplanets have already been discovered in the Milky Way alone. NASA's Kepler telescope is responsible for a majority of those discoveries. It was employed to examine the galaxy for nine years until it ran out of fuel in 2018. Finding small Earth-like planets is difficult with current technology, but the Chinese mission hopes to change that. Funded by the Chinese Academy of Sciences, Earth 2.0's satellite design will be reviewed by a panel of experts. If it passes, the team will receive funding to start building the satellite. The launching of the satellite will happen before the end of 2026 on a Long March rocket if everything goes according to plan. Seven telescopes will be carried into space by the Earth 2.0 satellite and will observe the galaxy for four years. They will move in the same area that the Kepler telescope searched. The strategy has been described as low-hanging fruit because there is already very good data from the area thanks to the Kepler telescope. The search will work by the telescopes detecting small changes in stars' brightness that indicate that a planet has passed in front of it. By using six telescopes altogether, it will give a wider field of view than a single large telescope, which is how Kepler operated. The Earth 2.0 satellite will also be able to observe dimmer and more distant stars. The new satellite is expected to be 10 to 15 times more powerful than NASA's Kepler telescope. The seventh telescope will be a gravitational microlensing telescope. It will survey rogue planets and free-roaming celestial objects that do not orbit any star. This telescope's target will be the center of the Milky Way. If the launch is successful, this will be the first gravitational microlensing telescope to operate from space. 
Unfortunately, four years into the Kepler mission, parts of the telescope stopped working and the telescope was not able to focus on one spot of the sky over a long period of time. Earth 2.0 would pick up where Kepler left off, but on a larger scale, with more telescopes observing the Cygnus Lyra constellations. Chinese scientists expect that their four years of data combined with Kepler's data will help verify which exoplanets are closely like the Earth. White Dwarf Survives Its Own Supernova Explosion Whilst a supernova typically marks the end of a star's lifetime, a recent finding suggests that this might not exactly be the case, as a white dwarf star seems to have been observed to survive its own supernova. A white dwarf is the last point in a star's life cycle before it becomes a supernova. Of course, not all stars are alike, but white dwarfs occur for stars that are like our Sun after the red giant stage. Despite them being only as big as the Earth, white dwarfs have a mass similar to our Sun, making them incredibly dense. This density is paired with a strong gravity, pulling material in close orbits in, eventually resulting in the thermonuclear destruction of the star, namely the supernova. However, back in 2012, astronomers observed the supernova of 2012Z, about 120 million light-years away from Earth, via the Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble data revealed something unusual, however. The progenitor star, namely the star that birthed the supernova, not only seemed to survive, but had grown brighter since the supernova, which was dubbed a Type IA supernova. Curtis McCulley, an astrophysicist at the Las Cumbres Observatory, said in a statement, Nobody was expecting to see a surviving star that was brighter. The stars left behind by these type IA supernovas that have seemingly failed have been nicknamed zombie stars. A theory that is still somewhat in development is that the thermonuclear explosion was not powerful enough to completely destroy the white dwarf star with a great deal of the debris simply landing back upon what remained. There are countless things we do not understand in space, and whilst it is frustrating to feel as though we must undo our knowledge, sometimes taking a few steps back will let us entirely open up our understanding. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.